Well, thank everybody very much for coming out. The, the 16th annual Ryan Merritt Memorial uh, Polo event to benefit shock trauma. Ryan Moore was my father who died 16 years ago and was a patient shock trauma. Thanksgiving Day he had an accident out fox hunting and was a quadriplegic. And shock trauma sent him home to us and this is my way of saying thank you. We are currently expanding shock trauma. The existing building was built 20 years ago to accommodate 3,500 people. Last year, in a single year, we served 8,628 people. We currently are desperate for additional space. Okay, thank you. So you said this is the 16th year? Dad died in July, we started this in August, and it was lukewarm chicken salad on a paper plate, and about 10 people. It's grown a little bit. And it's morphed into 500 people tonight. This is Palermo. Was your dad a polo player? Yes. Dad started playing polo when he was 63 years young. I think it was meant to try and get me to do something else, and then I started playing, and then I got better than he was. <laughs> in the number three position is P.J. Orthwine, followed by Tom Hubert in the number four position. In outdoor polo, there are four positions, one through four. One is primarily offense. Two is backup for one offensive. Three is a pivotal position that will go offense or defense. And four is primarily there to get away from the goal, as defense. The object of the game is to take the little white ball, and run about 30 miles an hour as fast as you can and try and hit a little white stick. That little white stick is 49 to 53 inches long. And if you hit it right, it'll take off and soar. It's sort of like, some people I can describe, I've only played golf once in my life, but apparently it's the same with golf. When you hit the ball the right way, that sweet spot, there's nothing better. What a hit from Tom Huber! And the rules of the game are all there for safety. Basically, it's lines of the ball in the right of way and when you can cross that line and when you can't because it's all for safety uh, for horse and rider. After, they, after every score, just to confuse everything, they switch sides. I love this sport. <laughs> it's a great sport. It really is. It's fun. Now the game is split up into... A game is made up of six chuckers of seven and a half minutes each. And every time the whistle blows, the timer stops. I thought they were saying truckers the uh. whole time. <laughs> like it's the third trucker. <laughs> Alright, besides the polo, what else do we have going on here? We have a silent auction of donated and procured items. The beneficiary would be shock trauma. I saw some unique items you have up there. We what have else do you have up there? Why not? <laughs> exactly. Whatever I can procure. We have from chainsaws to slinkies to plastic wine glasses. Whatever strikes my fancy and I can get people to give me. Did you raid the kid's toy chest for those, yes, the brain goo? You got it. Yes, I did. Now, technically, we are a sports show. I did see some really cool sports memorabilia. Yeah, we have the Wacko for Flacco um, football helmet signed by him. We have Jacoby Jones photographs. There's a Rick Dempsey and Scott McGregor photograph. There's one other one I'm missing. There's another Orioles one, isn't there? Oh, Adam Jones. Yes, Adam Jones. What is going to happen here after the third chucker? After the third chucker, there's a tradition that everyone goes out and stomps the divots back in the ground. In other words, either between, usually the horse's feet will cup up the dirt and the grass, and we have to put that back. Now, here, we also serve champagne. So you get free labor out of this. Exactly. The polo club gets the field put back together, but we, need to do, we should do that after the game. We don't do anything after the game, they just leave. <laughs>